The artist formerly known as Richard <laughs> Littlefield <laughs> III. <laughs> A few weeks ago, at another uh, writing group that I attended, church, St. David's, I mentioned that I couldn't figure out what to write about. One of the people there said, oh, why don't you write about your mother and the way she affected your life? <laughs> so I did. <laughs> Mom helped me to be a gardener and a fisher of men. As a little boy, I loved her most of all. Even though I needed more love than she seemed to give, she loved me. I always projected that I was her favorite child. She showed me love and conflict and emotion and joy and pain. These realities I have experienced throughout the adventure of my life. She taught me the love of plants. I have had a garden in every place I lived crawling about our childhood flower beds, the colorful zinnias, and yellow daffodils, and the smiling faces of the pansies, are repeated species within the gardens I tend. Hmm. To save a few pennies, she bought non-aged manure to work into the soil. She purchased crates of bright red beefsteak tomatoes at the farmer's ranch market to economize a few dollars. In turn, I shop at Marshall's and Ross dress for less. We usually had a real Christmas tree that was adorned with old, handmade, unsightly ornaments. I always disliked the way they looked. And for many years, I've had dozens of storage boxes full of elaborate holiday decor. She, so she sewed a lot and on four or five occasions made our Halloween costumes. I love costumes and have had many. I do not look good in a dress, which has eliminated any, any tendency to dress like her. She sewed slip covers and created many curtains. I buy a lot of yardage on sale, but construct my drapery designs with safety pins. After she became 40, her wardrobe was saturated with vivid colors. My artwork can often be more than colorful too. She was well coiffed, red hair, at the beauty parlor, nails and all, on a weekly basis during the 60s and 70s. During much of the 70s, I had my hair styled, often, and was one of the few males who admitted using hairspray. <laughs> she was domestically pleased when polyester clothing, no irony, came into style. Early polyester clothing made me look fatter, I'm more of a cotton and a wool and a silk kind of guy. I am more like her than my siblings, Alice and Jeff. Genetically, it is apparent to me that some of her traits are displayed within my physical and spiritual makeup. My small toes are curved in as if they are attempting to totally reverse. As I age, my index fingers are starting to shake like hers. She maintained a younger, physical appearance than her actual age. People have told me I look younger than I am. I do not dye my hair red when I had some. <laughs> but in grad school, my current boyfriend, a hairdresser, colored it violet. This color spectrum was not only among my favorite hues, but gave me special notice among my university peers. Her flamboyant and seductive nature taught me well not only how to get attention, but more importantly, how to land a man in my bed. <laughs> she could win almost any competition she took the time to concentrate on. I usually get what I want if I really want it. Her prolific production, with an current obsessive focus, allowed the creation of hundreds of crocheted afghans and quilts is similar to my copious outpouring of visual compositions. My most recent counselor mentioned that my manic traits helped me to get a lot accomplished. My mother's mood swings and subsequent, subsequent overuse of prescription medications, Milltown and Librium 
has warned me against following my own psychiatrist's orders. She was good at fishing. She caught big fish in the ocean, but her specialty was as a fisher of men. Entering a room full of people, she easily located her attraction. <laughs> About big ones and fishing, I did better at that particular harvest. You see, she usually employed her southern Mississippi charm to attract and attach. For me, being a male and growing up in the liberal big city environment of Los Angeles, I landed many, but only married three. She had eight. <laughs> Through the years, others and I encouraged her to write about her life. She did. As a proud and supportive son, I thought about writing her story. I had a title in mind, Almost an Ordinary Woman. And here I am writing. <laughs> Often my life has been experience of balls to the wall, and I thank my mother for showing, how, showing me how to do it. Uh -huh.